morning, BBC Houston. It's good to see you, wherever you may be, here at house, online. We just welcome you this morning. Would you rise to your feet as we open up in a word of prayer? God, we are so grateful, Lord, for all the things that you're doing here at our church and our family, God, in our city and our nation, God. We know, Lord, that you are the one that still sits on the throne. You deserve our praise. So this morning, God, we make a choice to put you first and just to give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen.
morning, Lord, that your peace surrounds us, God. God, that in the midst, Lord God, of what's going on, Lord, we know that fear must subside in the name of Jesus. So, God, this morning we call upon you, Lord, knowing, Lord God, that we are here for you, Father, and that you, Lord God, have overcame it all. God, no weapon formed against us shall remain. God, but your peace, love, and understanding will surpass it all. We worship you.
God, that we get to gather here as a church family, that we have the technology, Lord God, to stream for our others can watch online. God, for you are in the midst of us, wherever we may be. God, this morning, Lord, let that be a declaration for us, God, that you would continue to show us, Lord, who you are each and every day. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Church, you may have a seat this morning. Amen. Amen. Let us continue to worship God at this time through our tithing and our offering. I know many of us uh, had a great revival conference last weekend where we encountered God. We experienced Him in great and wonderful ways. And the great thing about God is that it doesn't stop at revival conference or on Sundays at church or at winter camp or whatnot, but it continues every single day in this journey with Him. You know, it says in the Bible that Noah walked with God. So if you, when you read the book of Genesis, that statement, that sentence is in there. And that also applies to us today that we can have our own journey and our own walk with God. Amen. And so God is a faithful God and he is our firm foundation, right? Because in the middle of the storm, not only is Jesus with us, but he joins us in whatever situation that we might be experiencing right now. And God is always worthy of our praise and worship and our adoration. And so with us today, um, with everyone here watching online and those here in this sanctuary, let us set our hearts to him as we worship God through our tithing and offering. And if you have your offering envelope out, before we pray for it, I just want to remind everyone that if you are giving through um, a check and you want to put it in the offering bucket, just hold on to it and you can put it in the blue offering buckets located uh, behind you, behind the glass doors as you exit service today. If you are watching online or here in this place right now and you want to continue to give um, through vbchouston.com, you can go to that website, click on the red give button in the upper right hand corner, and you can give that way. We are just so grateful for every single person that continues to faithfully give and pray for VBC Houston because it is because of everyone here and your generous hearts that we can continue to share the vision of VBC Houston with everyone that we encounter to love God, love people, discover purpose, and change the world. Let us bow our heads at this time and pray. God, we just set our hearts to you, God. You are so worthy of our praise and our worship, and we thank you, God, that we can have this walk with you every single day, God, that you know each of us by name, God, that you know the number of hairs on our head, 
God, that your thoughts for us are so vast and great that they're greater than the number of sand in the seashore, God. And we thank you, God, for that. We love you, God, and we just cry out to you, Lord, that you are worthy of everything, God, and even in our finances, God. So we just give to you at this time. We ask, God, that you will bless the offering that is being collected, that you will multiply it, and may it be used to further your kingdom here on this earth, God, that every person here will get the op- will be given the opportunity to receive your son, Jesus Christ, as their personal Lord and Savior. And we always continue to pray for every single person in this place and those watching online that you will bless them wherever they're at, God, and that you will overflow and pour out such a blessing upon them that they won't even be able to handle it, God. We know that you are a generous God. You are a faithful God. You are a loving God. So we thank you. We love you. In Jesus' name that we pray, amen. So we have a few announcements that we want to go over before we continue with the message. The first announcement is that if we have family members here with small children, we want to remind you all that we are uh, having BBC Kids on the other side of the campus in the CLC. So if you have kids that you would like for them to be in an in-class environment to learn and worship God, please just walk them over at this time. Now we have opened up both our BBC Kids ministry at 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. And it's just a great time for kids to gather here on a Sunday to worship God. For those who are viewing online, you can continue to stream BBC Kids online via YouTube. And all you have to do is just click on the uh, link in the comment section in the Facebook live feed, and it will take you to that. Amen. So during our 21 days of prayer and fasting in the months of August and October, we were going through a book called Experiencing God, and we were reading it every day just to draw closer to God. Well, now um, that Revival Conference is over, we want to continue to press on in, and we will continue to study the Experiencing God book. And so we will be studying through it and praying through it uh, via Simple Church. And so if many of you have you know, joined us on Simple Church throughout the year, especially during the pandemic where we get on Zoom and we just encourage one another and just encourage one another to seek God, go after Him and just grow in Him. And so if you are interested this week in joining our Simple Church as we continue to go through the Experiencing God book to draw, to draw closer to God, we just ask that you will email us at info at vbchouston.com and then we will send you an email and give you more information about how to join in and how to participate. Okay, so last announcement is a very special one. Next Sunday, November the 1st, we have a very special birthday in the house. Our senior pastor, Pastor Khan Nguyen, is going to be having a milestone birthday. It's a big one, all right? So we just ask that you will join us next Sunday as we celebrate our senior pastor. And all of us here, including myself, can just go on and on and share about how much he has invested in each and every one of us for us to grow closer to God and for us to be used by God to fulfill the destiny and the purpose in our lives. I have been taking premarital counseling with my fiance, Fook Nguyen, uh, with Pastor Khan the last several weeks, and he has just a love to just instill in people just what God has for their lives. And, you know, we're just so grateful for it. And I know many of you all here have some kind of testimony like that. So let's join us next Sunday so we can just celebrate our senior pastor. And we'll be out in the parking lot um, having a, a, a party, physical distancing style, as we just celebrate his birthday with uh, birthday treats and refreshments. And so with that, let us give us a warm, let us give a warm welcome to Pastor Sam as he comes up to share the word. Amen. Good morning, church. It is a very cozy morning this morning, isn't it? It was actually, the weather change has, uh, you know, it's given us all the fall vibes. I'm surprised a lot of you guys didn't stop by and get maybe some pumpkin spice or something like that, you know. With the weather changing, it also means something else, too. And it also reminded me this morning of just a change in many of our lives right now. A change in many of our hearts and a change in, I don't know, maybe there's a spiritual change that's happening in your life. Or on the other side, maybe there needs to be a spiritual change in your life. Now coming out of conference, I mean, there's so many stories. It was such an amazing time. There's so many, I mean, testimonies. There's even testimonies that keep carrying on. There's so many different things that have happened during conference, at conference, that for me, my life was just blessed. 
And I know that conference may have been just a little bit different, but it didn't change anything. I actually thought it was really strong this year. And, you know, during conference, you know, one of the things that just really just brought me to a place where I was experiencing God on another level, it was actually during the time of prayer and during the time where people, of course, we stayed in our chairs and the pastors came to the rows and came to our seats. And it, during that time of prayer, I felt that it was awesome to see everybody's hearts just get prepared and get ready. I'm on the opposite side. I'm on the side where I, I'm seeing people praying. And to be able to see people just get their hearts ready to want to receive and want to experience the things of God was just a beautiful thing because there are some people that came from all around the United States that sat mainly in the middle section here, and you could see how hungry most of them were. And I, I got to ask some of them, like, oh, when's the last time that you guys have been in church? Are y'all still back in church? Or have you started going to church right now? And a lot of them said, we're not even in church yet. Uh, we haven't been able to meet or gather. And to be able to see them worship their hearts out, to see them want to receive as much as they could during conference was just a testimony in itself showing us Letting us see that experiencing God was the theme, but not just the theme, the perfect theme for people. That we needed to experience God on another level. And I hope that even this morning, you're going to be able to experience God too. See, one of the things that I wanted to talk about today is how do you carry on the experience after something like conference? See, many of us in this room, we go to conference. We're empowered. We're filled. We receive his presence and we're in his presence. But what about after conference? How do you continue to maintain being in his presence? How do you continue experiencing the things that you experienced during conference? I mean, many of us at conference, it was our first time, you know, probably crying at the altar. It was probably our first time, you know, worshiping with our hands up in a while. For, for a lot of us, it was probably our, our, our first times or it's during that time of the year where we begin to serve again in church. For some of us, it's probably the most church you've ever gotten in a three-day span, right? It's the most you've dug into the word. It's the most you've prayed. It's the most you've worshiped. But how do you continue that after conference? How do you maintain having that relationship with Christ? How do you maintain having that same level of experience even if conference isn't happening? Because what I've realized throughout my life and what I've, what I've realized throughout just being here at, at VBC is that sometimes a lot of us can go to conference and have the best experience and receive the most we've ever received from God. And then afterwards, things start to change, like the seasons start to change in our life or, or, or the temperature in our life starts to change from going from hot to a little bit cold where, well, it's, it's not the same because I'm not getting the message, you know, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I may not be worshiping early in the morning and all the way to the end of the night. You know, I've, I've, got, I've got a job, Pastor Sam. It's tough for me to honestly uh, carry this out, really. Um, reading the Bible, it, it's tough for me. So being able to hear messages, it actually helped me. Uh, during, that time of, during that time, Pastor Sam, I had a lot of time to serve, and, and I felt so free, but I don't have that kind of freedom. And so... What, what can I do? How do I maintain that? Because that's something that I want. The experience that I had with God at conference is something that I want to carry on, but, but how do I do that? Because I feel like it's always a battle. And I can't be the only one that feels that because I've seen time and time again where after a big conference or after a big, you know, worship night or whatever it is, you're so on fire but how do you maintain that throughout the week? Or how do you maintain that just throughout your life? Because the thing is, we can't just have that kind of experience only at conference. We need to have that every single day. To be able to experience God every single day, we have to put in the same work that we put in when we had conference. Let's think about conference really quick. It was probably the best, the most thought out, planned out, safest conference we had because of the pandemic. But with that came a lot of preparation. With that came a lot of help. With that came a lot of prayer. And so before conference, we had 21 days of fasting and praying. Everyone's hearts were getting ready. Everyone's minds were in the right place. Everyone's spirit was aligned with Christ. And then after 21 days of prayer, 
we got to a place where we were strategizing, trying to understand how we were going to help not only the church locally, but individuals that were coming around. We were trying to get to the place of even overflow. That's what Pastor Khan taught us. And all this is building up to a place where we get to conference where we are wanting God to pour into our lives so much so that when we serve, other people can experience God too. You know, we, we, we learned about God's plan. We're all a part of God's plan. Somehow, some way, you, you were able to be a part of his plan and people were blessed by it. And then after that, we learned about experiencing God. And during this time of experiencing God, conference was in it too. So we went to a place of fasting and prayer, preparing our hearts to serve others, and then coming to conference and being able to experience God. Is that like a formula, Pastor Sam? Like, do I have to do that every single day in order to experience God? No, it's, it's not. It's not like that. But I was able to get into a scripture right after conference. And I thought about it right away. As soon as conference finished, it was a uh, Sunday night. I sat in my office. Everything was being cleaned. And uh, we actually stayed at church till about 2 a.m. And I, I, I just sat in my office and I thought, like, this was an awesome conference. Like, people stepped up. People stepped up that didn't even think they could step up the way that they did. And Dream Team, y'all did a fantastic job. We couldn't have done it without you guys. And the way that we were able to serve, I, I literally felt that we were like one unit just moving and we were able to do things that we didn't think that we were able to do in such a little time that we had. And we were able to accomplish so much. And I thought, Lord, I don't want this to end. Lord, I, I don't want the hunger of our church or the hunger of the people going back home to end. It was, a, it was a beautiful thing to see people worship their heart out. It was a beautiful thing to see people serve with all of their heart, to not serve the church, but, but literally to do everything for you, Lord. It was a beautiful thing. And I sat in my office, I thought, man, Lord, how, how do we maintain this? And as I went home and thought about some scripture and looked into it, and uh, I came to the scripture that I thought, Lord, what are you showing me? I've read this scripture before. How does this apply to this particular time in our life where we want to maintain what we've experienced? And so this is where I want to take us. I want us to take a look at John 14, 23 to 24. And the scripture that we're going to read today has a particular part in the scripture that I feel like it's the key to understanding how to experience God on the daily. So John 14, 23 through 24. And I'm reading out the New Living Translation. It says, Jesus replied, All who love me will do what I say. My Father will love them, and we will come and make our home with each of them. Anyone who doesn't love me will not obey me, and remember my word are not my own. What I am telling you is from the Father who sent me. Let's read that one more time. Jesus replied, All who love me will do what I say. My Father will love them, and we will come and make our home with each of them. Anyone who does not love me will not obey me. And remember, my words are not my own. What I'm telling you is from the Father who sent me. When I read that scripture, I thought, man, I, I've read this before. I mean, I, I understand. Lord, I, the ones who love you are going to do what you ask. And I felt like God was telling me, no, that's not the part of the scripture that I want you to actually look at. That's not only the part of the scripture that's going to help you experience me every day. And the biggest part of it was actually the portion that says, and we will come and make our home with each of them. See, I, when I read that scripture, I thought, man, this is, this is it. This is exactly it. You know, because when we plan conference and, and, we, and we're, we're hosting revival conference here at VVC Houston, it's like, it's like we've done everything almost to the point of hosting the Lord. If it makes sense, like when you have a guest come over to your house, you prepare your house, take out the trash, you know, restock all the food, make sure your fridge is full, that guest room that nobody stays in, you kind of like dust it off and put the sheets in the washer and dryer and fluff the pillows, make sure everything's dusted, all those kind of things. You're like preparing for a guest to stay at your house. And while the guest is staying at your house, you have like almost a, a schedule. You almost have like an itinerary. Like when I have people come into town, I'm like, okay, Killens, got to make sure I take them to barbecue. 
Got to make sure I take them, you know, to the Galleria, if they've never seen the Galleria, one of the biggest malls. Got to make sure I do this. Make sure I definitely take them to Chinatown if they haven't experienced our Chinatown. Make sure I take them maybe to Chama so they can have some Brazilian steak. And I think of these things that I enjoy here, but a guest would enjoy also. And when I read this scripture, I thought, we do such a good job at that for conference. And I'm not talking about just guests. I'm talking about in our lives, we make it, we do such a good job hosting the Lord in our life before conference and during conference. So you prepare the way for the Lord. You fast and you pray. You cleanse yourself of all the things that you wouldn't want to have in your house if a guest was there. And while your guest comes, you make sure that their stay is comfortable. We make sure that our life is in the right place where Christ would want to dwell in, where the Holy Spirit could use us. See, and we make sure that we maintain that kind of lifestyle because we know that we want to experience God as much as we can at conference. And we try our best and we try our hardest to just continue, Lord, I want to focus on you. I want to focus on you. I want to, and it's like a big buildup to conference, right? And then you've ex, and you experience that. And then sometimes I feel like this, when you, have a, when you have a cousin come to your house, they haven't seen in a while, and they stay at your house, and you have a family member that comes, and then afterwards, it's like, you don't even check up on them anymore. Oh, man, it was, whew, that was a lot of work hosting. Man, I didn't get any sleep. I feel like my wallet's a little empty. I've taken them out everywhere. And, and some of us get to that point of exhaustion because we don't normally host people at our house, right? And when I read this scripture, I thought, if only we could understand to make a place for Christ in our lives and let him be in our house or be in our home and dwell in our hearts every single day. Because here's the thing. When you can allow the Holy Spirit to dwell in your life every single day, the same experience that you had at conference is the same experience that you'll have every single day. And how do I know that that's true? Because what you experience at conference is the same Holy Spirit that wants to live inside of your life every day. The same type of miracles that you saw happen at conference is the same power that lives inside of you if you allow the Holy Spirit to dwell in your life. The same kind of prayer and the same kind of worship that you experience on conference or in conference, during conference, before conference, is the same kind of experience that the Holy Spirit actually wants every single day too. But how do you do that? It's so tough, Pastor Sam. Like, how... 21 days of fasting and praying, I don't know if I could fast every day. During conference, I, 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 sometimes during my week, Pastor Sam, to be honest, I probably worship four times a week. And Sunday's included in that four times. And, and reality sets in for a lot of us that it became something of understanding, well, why did it happen in conference and why can't it happen at home? Because here's the thing. A lot of us are good at doing the acts of preparing the way for Christ, but allowing him to stay in our hearts forever, allowing him to be a part of our lives forever, that's the part where we haven't figured out yet. And see, the thing to understand is this, is that when we do the things that the Lord wants us to do, it says in Scripture that they will live in our hearts. They will come and make their place with us. They will dwell with us, make their home with us. And that's what I want us to look at today. Can you get to a place where your life is ready to host the Holy Spirit every day? And I'm not talking about an Airbnb where the Holy Spirit gets to check in here and check out there. I'm talking about does your house, does your life have a permanent spot that the Holy Spirit lives? Because here's the thing. If the Holy Spirit has a permanent spot in your life, you'll experience everything you experience at conference, but every single day. You experience a move of God just like you did at conference, but every day. And how do I know that that's true? Because right after conference, I experienced the same thing that I experienced here. Because right after conference, we had somebody bring their friend on Tuesday, and they were healed. Same. Because we allow the Holy Spirit to live in our lives to the point of where, they, where the Holy Spirit lives in our life, not just as a guest, but as a permanent resident. Is the Holy Spirit living in your life as a permanent resident, or are you still treating him as a guest? Because that's the thing about experiencing him every single day. See, the first thing that I want us to talk about, about experiencing the Holy Spirit every single day of our lives, and it's actually the title of my message is this, is your house ready? 
Is your house ready? Think about that yourself right now. You're saying to yourself, I want the Holy Spirit to be in my life, and I want to experience him every single day. Well, is your house ready is the question. Is your heart ready to experience him every day, actually? Because during conference, during 21 days of fasting and praying, of course my heart's ready. But is your heart ready now? Are you in the place to experience God every single day? Is your heart, is your house ready for the Holy Spirit to live there? And it's okay. It's okay to be here at church and say, well, maybe it's not. Because you're going to get to a place where you can understand, well, I need to change that, though. It's okay to understand that you're not at that place yet because, hey, the Holy Spirit's ready to come whenever you're ready to open the doors. And you wouldn't want a guest to come into your house when it's not ready. You know, a funny story that I want to share about that is my, my nephew Austin, one day I, I, I randomly came over to their house, just knocked on the door. Patricia lives very close to me. And I said, I came into the house. Austin was sleeping. I was talking to Patricia, and I was like, oh, wow, like, she was doing laundry. I don't have kids, so my house isn't like that. I, I, she had laundry. She had all their toys out everywhere. She just made lunch. Everything was everywhere. And Austin hears me talking, so he wakes up. And do you know what his first initial thought was? It was so strange. It wasn't to come hug me. It wasn't to come say hi to me. That kid ran to the closet, grabbed a Swiffer, a real Swiffer, and started just zooming across the house and just Swiffering back and forth. And I was like, what is he doing, Chang? And she looked at him and goes, Austin, it's too late. They've already seen our mess. And it was like the funniest thing, because he was so serious. He grabbed that Swiffer, and he was going back and forth, back and forth. He didn't even talk to me yet, going through the kitchen, going through the living room, going through the, the bedroom, and coming out. And as soon as he was done, and, and, or he wasn't done yet, and Patricia said, Austin, it's too late. He just looked at her like, <sighs> And the funny thing is, sometimes that's how we are when we treat the Holy Spirit. You know, we come on Sunday, right, and we want to, we're filled, we're like, Lord, I, I want you to come, and then we're like frantically cleaning, okay, Lord, get, get this out of my life, uh, trying to pray, and all these kind of things. Well, what if the house was prepared ahead of time? See, a lot of us, we come to church on Sunday morning wanting to receive, but on the way to church, are we preparing our heart to receive the Holy Spirit? On Sunday mornings, I, I'm praising and worshiping in my car, because what I want to happen is the same God I'm experiencing at home, I want to experience here on Sunday. And the same experience I'm having at home with Christ, I want that same experience to not only resonate with what I preach, but also through my lifestyle. I want to be able to show that, that hey, the same God you see me preaching about here is the same God I'm, I'm hanging out with at home. But how do you do that? The first thing, take out the trash. Let's get practical. Let's take out the trash. And spiritually, what I'm talking about is let's take out the things that are toxic in our life so that the Holy Spirit can live there. How do you do that, of course? Repentance. Repentance is the thing that we have to do in order to get the Holy Spirit to be able to live comfortably in our life is repentance. This is a scripture that I want us to read. It says from 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let's talk about trash for a little bit. When we're cleaning out our house, for me, my wife and I, I've got one job to do that she, she doesn't do. That one job is taking out the trash. And for every husband and every son that is in this room, you'll understand exactly what I'm saying. Your wife asks you, your mom asks you, Hey, can you take out the trash? It's trash day tomorrow. Our famous line. Yeah, 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 I'll do it later. I'll get to it. I'm the only one in here, yeah? I'll get to it. I'll do it later. I'll do it later. Okay. Jeannie comes and asks me again. Hey, it's, it's 1 o'clock, okay? It's 1, 1 a.m. The trash comes at 6 a.m. Now, don't worry. I'll get to it later. Lay in bed. Boom. Fell asleep. Woke up the next day, 10 o'clock. Trash been gone. <laughs> And I told Jeannie, ah, it's okay. We got trash day on Friday. Just one bag of trash. Don't worry. It'll be fine. But we live in Houston, Texas. That means that's three hot days of the steamy trash that will sit in my garage for three days. Because Jeannie likes to clean out the fridge of all the things that need to be thrown away. All the food that's going bad and all the things that are trash. 
So for three days, it sits in the garage. Smelly, hot, steamy, and guess what? Nobody else has to suffer, just the one that didn't take out the trash, because I park my car in the garage. So sometimes my car smells a little bit. And sometimes I even do that thing where it's like, let me just air out the garage just a little bit. So I just like, you know, bring up the garage a half an inch. And you know what that reminds me of, that same experience? I'll take care of that sin later. I'll, I'll repent for it later. I'll, I'll, I'll make sure I take care of that later. And a couple of days go by. Oh, but, but it's not that much. I'll take care of it later. But here's the thing. On a normal basis when you're at home, it's like a game to everybody. I don't know why, but at my house, it's sometimes it's a game with Jeannie and V. It's like, can we stack the trash so high, even though Sam's supposed to take out the trash? Like, just keep stacking it. And sometimes in our life, it's almost like that. But the things that we deal with, it's like, can, how, how much can I stack until it just tips? And we don't want to say it like that, but we've experienced it before, but we haven't learned from our experience yet. We still do it. But let me ask you a question. If you were to have a guest come over to your house, would you allow your house to have trash in it like that? I don't think so. But if our lives is the temple of God, if our lives is the place where Christ is going to dwell in, would we allow our lives to have trash in it? Or are we ready to take out the trash? See, when I thought of conference, we got rid of every single thing that looked like trash, was trash, probably should be in the trash. We got rid of all of it. There's so much trash to the point where our trash can was full. And then after, it, after we took out all the trash, we felt like, wow, so nice. And sometimes that's what you need in your life. To get rid of the trash that you don't need or you don't want in your life that's toxic or that's rotting or that smells. Spiritually, the things that don't do well in your life or you're not supposed to have in your life. Those are the things that we need to take out. And guess what, guys? Today's trash day. Take out the trash. Because here's the thing. If you want to host the Holy Spirit in your life, would you do it with trash? Or would you want a clean place room? And as practical as this message can be and as easy as it is to understand, some of these things are the hardest in our lives to do. You know why? Because it's my house. I do things how I like it done. I take out the trash when I want to take it out. But you don't say that when you have guests over. How can I help you? Do you need something to drink? Something to eat? And I'm reminded by just this scripture alone, ho like hosting the Holy Spirit and allowing the Holy Spirit to live in our lives. When I was younger, my friends would say this all the time. Man, your mom feeds us the best. <laughs> like, what? Like, dude, every time we come over to your house, your mom literally has breakfast, lunch, and dinner and snacks in between for us. I'm like, yeah, that's how my mom is. It's like she cooks food, but she won't sit down to eat food because she's making something else and making sure that whatever she makes is something that you like. And that's how my mom is. That's how a lot of our moms are. But are you like that for the Holy Spirit? See, are we at this place where, hey, Holy Spirit, whatever you need in my life, whatever needs to be done for you, how can I take care of it? How can I do it for you? Let's read this scripture one more time, okay? I, I, I want to go back to the scripture in John. It says, Jesus replied, all who love me will do what I say. My Father will love them, and we will come and make our home with each of them. Anyone who doesn't love me will not obey me. And remember, my words are not my own. What I'm telling you is from the Father who sent me. When I read this scripture, and when I thought about the first point, just taking out the trash, you know, I thought to myself, why is it so hard sometimes for us to take out the trash? And I'm not talking about physical trash. I'm talking about spiritual trash. Why is it so hard for us to deal with some of those things? Why? Why is it? And I think it's because a lot of us have become in the mentality of like hoarding. If you guys know what hoarding is, there's like a TV show about hoarders where they just keep everything, hold on to everything. And... I think that that's something in our lives, too, is that we have a hard time letting go of some of the things in our past. And see, some of those things in our past are the things that are holding us back from going to our future. 
And with Christ, those things that are in our past, God leaves it behind. He doesn't cause us to remember that. He doesn't have a file cabinet of the things that we've done wrong, but we do. Oh, man, I can't come worship God. Remember that time that I did that? Oh, I'm not worthy of being a house for the Lord. Remember when I did this? And we constantly remind ourselves of the trash that we have in our lives when God's saying, it's okay, just take it out. It's okay, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. How many of us are in that place where we've cluttered our lives with things of the past? And we're not physical hoarders, but we're spiritual hoarders. We're holding on to the things that are holding us back from our future potential. You know, I saw a lot of us serve during conference. And I saw a lot of people serve that before conference, I, I probably have asked them to try to serve in this spot, but they weren't ready for that place. And a lot of those people, a lot of them happened to be youth at the time, and I've been speaking to the youth for the last three to four weeks. And I had to show them and teach them and let them know that, hey, don't worry about what your past is telling you. God loves you for who you are. Ask for forgiveness and continue to serve. And one thing that blessed my heart was the Sunday before the week of conference, the youth literally took over the church and got things done. And it was like, it was like at that day, I told the youth, I said, every week for three weeks, I said, at the end of this, at the end of this class, I'm going to dismiss at 1230. If you'd like to leave, go ahead and leave. But everybody else who wants to stay, we're going to pray, we're going to ask God to use us, and we're going to get our hearts ready for conference. The first week, I had about four students. Four students stay. The second week, I had about eight students stay. The third week, probably about the same, probably about eight. And then the last week, I said, eight. I said, it's 1230. It's time to leave. If you guys need to leave, if you'd love to stay, I'm going to stay back and pray for those who want prayer. And I said, I'll give you guys a couple of minutes to leave whenever you're ready, and then we'll get the room ready to start praying and worshiping and getting our hearts ready for conference. Not a single student left. Not a single student left. Because everybody was ready to get to that place where God could live in their life. Not a single student left because they were ready to be on fire. And, and when I say not a single student, not one single student left that classroom until they got prayer. Not one single student left that room without receiving a word from God. Not one single student left that room without taking out their trash. They're ready to receive God. Yeah, it, it took four weeks, but they did it. You know, sometimes we're like, oh, it's been four weeks since I've really talked to God, so I'll just keep going. Get it done. It's trash day. Take out the trash. Letting you know, guys, the trash has got to be taken out by 1030. I want us to get to that place where our lives are ready to host the Holy Spirit every single day. That our lives are ready to let the Holy Spirit have a bedroom in our life. Because if you allow the Holy Spirit to have a bedroom in your life, he ain't going nowhere. And that's how you experience God every day. Is when you can prepare this, you can experience it all. When you can prepare this, oh, what do you mean? Even at my workplace? Even at your workplace. What do you mean? Even at my job? Yeah, even at the job that you own. Even at school? Even at school. Even in my marriage? Yes. Because see, here's the thing. If we follow up with what the scripture said in the very beginning, there's a portion in the beginning that's important too. All who love me will do what I say. My Father will love them. And see, Taking out the trash isn't just about your life either, because here's the thing. At my house, whenever I forget to take out the trash, everybody really suffers, though. It smells. The garage stinks. It's the worst. Or if I forget to take out the trash during the day, it just piles up, then sits on the counter sometimes. And I just have to get it done, because everybody else suffers, because everybody else, you know, doesn't take, it's not their job to take out the trash. And for us, spiritually, where we're at, I'm letting you know, it's your job to take out the trash. 
and get to that place where you're ready to host the Holy Spirit every day. Conference is, conference is over, guys. The experiences that you had, those are great, but God's got something new for you every single day. It, it, it's not, let's live on the past. Let's, let's think of what happened. No, what's he doing today for you? Because that's the testimony that you can give today. That's what he wants to tell you today. Those stories that you, you share with about conference, those are the memories that we have, but you've got to be ready to say, but hey, my God's still living today. One of the things that Pastor Chris said at, at conference that blessed my heart, he said, and it, I'm a paraphraser along the lines, he, he said, there's a, a dead God doesn't do miracles, but a living God does. And we have a living God ready to live in our life that will do miracles every day. And people can think that our God is dead, and people can think that our God does not, you know, get outside of the pages of the book, but I'll let you know that if you believe that there's a living God in your life, there will be miracles. And I sat in my office last night, and I looked up on my wall, and God reminded me, I have the biggest sign in my office, it's the only sign in my office, that says, there will be miracles. If you allow the Holy Spirit to live in your life, I'll tell you this, church, there will be miracles. There are many of us in this room that need a miracle. I'm included in that. I need a miracle. Don't forget, if it doesn't happen, that doesn't mean he didn't do it yet. There will be miracles. The second thing that I want us to talk about is this. After taking out the trash, it's time to prepare the house. So the trash is out, it's time to prepare what, the house to host. How do you prepare the house? How do you do it? Well, you know, there might be some decor. There might be some uh, pantries that need to be filled. The fridge needs to have all the drinks and all the waters ready. All these things that we're preparing. So how do you prepare your life spiritually for the Lord? Let's take a step back and let's talk about what we did for conference, right? The practical side of it. What did you do for conference to prepare the house to host people and also host and have the Holy Spirit do his thing here? What did you do? What did you do for your life? You prayed up and you praised up. You prayed your heart out and you praised him with everything that you had. And I will not ever forget the dance that happened on this stage with Emily and Trista and the other girls that danced to you for promises. Like, I was in the back of the church, and I don't know if people saw me or heard me, but I bawled my eyes out. I was crying so much. Crying. I mean, just the moment the flags went off, I was crying. And I wasn't the only person, because Kevin Tran came into my office and said, I don't know what it was, but the moment the flags went off, I just started crying. I don't know why. And you know what it was? It was a celebration of saying, Holy Spirit, you are here, and this is for you. And praising him, and that song promises, giving him praise, understanding that your promises are true, and I'm holding on to it. The rock on which I stand. The promises that you have for me, Lord, I'm going to hold on to that. And that's something for me that I have to hold on to, too. The promises that God has for my life, I'm holding on to those things. So I'm going to make way for him. I'm going to prepare my house for him. I'm going to get my mind. I'm going to get my heart in the right place. And, and, and how do you get your mind and heart in the right place to prepare your house for the Lord? Well, number one, there's belief. You've got to believe that he's going to do miracles when he enters into your life. You've got to believe that there's going to be an experience of God every single day. You can't allow the enemy to tell you that, oh, no, it only happens at conference and when Pastor Khan preaches. It only happens at conference when Pastor Khan lays his hands on you. It's not that. And Pastor Khan will be the first to tell you it's not him. It's he who is working through him. It's the Holy Spirit. And he wants to do the same through you. See, we are all vessels for Christ. We are all hosting the Holy Spirit in our lives. We are all allowing the Holy Spirit to live in our lives. And he will do the same in every single one of our lives if we allow him to. There are just some of us who, there are just some of us in, in, in this room where, Holy Spirit, yeah, you can be a part of my life, uh, but at uh, 6 o'clock, I got to go somewhere, um, so you got to be somewhere else. And uh, you can come back whenever I come home at like 8 o'clock. And we kind of have like a time frame and a time schedule when we allow the Holy Spirit to be in our lives. And, and, and I know that for some of you guys, you're like, ah, oh, no, that, that's not true. Okay, but does the Holy Spirit want to watch the movies that you're watching? Or does the Holy Spirit want to partake in the things that you're doing? Right? 
Because at conference, right, at conference the house is ready. We've taken out the trash. And when I thought about all this, guys, I myself, I was at a place where I was like, God, this is so true for my life. This is so true. The, the, the word that we're reading right here is so true. Because if we got down to, if we got down to it, the things that we have to obey that the Lord is saying, we're like, I'll obey some of it, but not all of it. But then that's not what the scripture says. Like, he'll, he'll make his place in, with those who just obey some of it. It doesn't say that. But it's a challenge. But it's a challenge. Are you willing and ready to allow the Holy Spirit to live in your life? Does he mean that much to you? Because look, let's look back. The memories that you have from conference, the experience that you had at conference, do you want to experience that every day? And for me, it's a yes. I would not want to not experience what I experienced at conference. I want to experience that every day because I know 100% that without what I experience at church every single day, I would have doubts. I would have some fear of not knowing, it. God, are you going to pull through, or is your promise is real for me? God, can you still heal me at home, or do I need to come up to church and get healing and ask for healing? Can I pray for myself at home? If I have a family member or a loved one that, that needs prayer, do I have to wait until Sunday to bring them to church, or, or because... Now I know that the power of you, the power that has conquered the grave, the power that can heal lives inside of me now, that I can do it too. Are you at that place where you understand and you want that for your life? You have to be a vessel that is willing to be used by him no matter what the cost is. Because that is when he can move, is when he has freedom in your house, when he goes from just being a guest to a, a resident and is allowed to do what he wants in your life, you will see miracles. You will see transformation. You will see lives changed around you. You will see people's uh, situations begin to change when you can speak into their life. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is guiding you and speaking through you. You know, I thought about this, and... Next door, I have a neighbor who, I'm still praying, one day, my neighbor's coming to church. One day, my neighbor's coming to church. I'm continuing to pray, I'm continuing to pray. And, you know, God has opened up doors of opportunity for me to just speak into his life. And, you know, I'm not a dad, but he asks me questions because he knows that I deal with a lot of youth and he has a daughter. And I sat in the car with him to go pick up his daughter from school because we just came home from doing some errands and stuff. He says, do you mind going with me to, you know, pick up my daughter? I said, no problem, let's go do it. He said, I could drop you off first. No, no problem, let's go. And it just so happened that his daughter was uh, actually in practice. And so we came almost like 45 minutes early. He said, do you want to go home? Or do you? I said, no, let's just sit and talk right here. And I was able to just talk and, and, and get to know him a little bit more. And I, I, I truly prayed I said, Holy Spirit, this is the chance. Holy Spirit, let, let's, let's do something here. Let me, let me be able to talk to him. You know, and, and I got to know him on a different level, and I got to understand him a little bit more, and I got to see other things about him that I may not have known about him. And, you know, one of the things that he said to, not me, but when he got a chance to meet one of my family members, he said to them, man, like, it's so awesome the way that your family hangs out. Like, I wish I had that. Like, I, I wish that I had my siblings here to hang out, like how you and Sam and everybody, y'all just come over to the house and just eat and hang out. Like, I wish I had that too. You know, and when I saw that, I said, in my heart, I said, man, that's someone who needs a community. That's someone who needs a family. And you know the best thing about houses, the coolest thing? Man, I, I didn't have this growing up. But now living in Pearland, I see it on Facebook all the time. You guys know what a block party is? I've never been to a block party ever in my life where the cul-de-sac's like, hey, let's all get together. Let's rent a movie screen. Let's all hang out in the cul-de-sac. I've never had that before. Never at my old house. 
But when I moved here, I see, I see kids and their families hanging out in the cul-de-sac. There's Facebook posts that says, hey, come to this street. We're having a block party. And that's what we need to do. See, so because if I have the Holy Spirit living in my life, and you've got the Holy Spirit living in your life, and you do too, we can have block parties. And what is a block party? We invite people to come that don't know about the Holy Spirit. But because the Holy Spirit lives in you, and me, and you, and you, we're going to throw the best party for people to see that there is community, that there is love, that there is peace. And the, the best part of all, the Holy Spirit in our lives can speak through us. And it's going to be the same message across because we have the same Holy Spirit living in us. And the experience that you experience here, you could bring it there to your neighborhood too. And that's what I want us to, to talk about right here is that church, it's not on the back burner. It's not on delay. We still have the vision to move to Paraland. We still have the vision to see that VBC Houston is going to move to Paraland. We want to see the community of Shadow Creek changed. And, and I see it. You know, I thought... And I told, I told uh, Pastor Khan this, I said, it might be a little tough when we move to Shadow Creek. Like the English service might grow because I feel like there's a lot of English speaking. Uh, what about the Vietnamese group? How's that going to grow and maintain? Like how, how's that going to happen? And, you know, I, I, I began to ask God, like, Lord, like this is, this is something that I want both groups to grow. How, how can this happen? And I really felt like the Holy Spirit say, don't worry, I got it taken care of. And as I began to say that, and as I began to ask the Holy Spirit, like, take care of this situation, we had families from VVC move to Paraland. They're Vietnamese. I got new neighbors the other day. They're Vietnamese. We got more pho shops opening up every single week. They, I find out there's more Vietnamese people. And I see that it, we're supposed to be projected to have an Asian grocery store in Paraland. There's going to be Vietnamese people. And God's preparing the way because he knows when we allow him to live in our lives, he'll take care of the things that we need taken care of. He's not one of those guests that goes and tears up your house. Those guests that you're like, oh, don't stay at my house next time. You know, like get a hotel or something. Like one of those cousins that you're like, Ugh, don't come over. No, the Holy Spirit, he enhances your life. The Holy Spirit changes your house. He changes the atmosphere in your house where it's a place of, where it went from a place of being maybe chaotic to a place of love and joy and peace, to a place where you may not have seen things become fruitful, to where he is changing things in your life to be fruitful and multiply. And I'm not talking about kids. I'm, I'm just talking about being able to reproduce the Holy Spirit's love to every single person that comes in contact with you or comes into your house or comes into your life. That's the experience of God every day. That's what we experience at conference. People experience God's love, God's peace, God's joy, his healing. But we can show that to people every day by allowing the Holy Spirit to live inside of us, make his home inside of us, dwell in our hearts, allowing the Holy Spirit to guide us and lead us. You know, sometimes we, we ask our guests when they come stay at our house, like, what do you prefer? What do you want me to cook? Or where would you like to go eat? We always ask our guests that. And if you don't ask your guests that, are you really doing a good job at hosting your guests, right? If you're not taking care of their needs. Why don't you try this? Holy Spirit, what would you like for me to do with my family? Holy Spirit, how should I love on my coworker this week? Holy Spirit, how should I bring words of encouragement to my job this week? I know you're with me, and I know you'll speak through me, so how should I do it? Holy Spirit, as yeah, simple as this, and I do this too. Holy Spirit, what kind of song do you want me to worship to today? I do that, no joke. Tremble, been on the playlist ever since conference. Because being able to shout out your name, it's just, being able to shout out just Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble. Like, I was shouting that out in my office. Being able to sing promises, I've been singing promises and Waymaker for months now. Because those are the songs that I'm clinging on to because that's the anthem that I'm saying to the God that lives inside of my life. You're my way maker, and I know that your promises are going to be fulfilled. You ask God, what's your preference? What would you like? Where would you like to go? Who would you like to talk to? Do you have any friends that you want to invite over? And those are the people that God wants you to speak to. See, when we can make our house ready by the Holy Spirit, things will change.
you will be able to experience God every day. If you're in a place right now where you're saying, I'm ready to take out the trash and I'm ready to prepare my house, you're almost there. You're almost there. There's one last thing that you need to do before a guest comes over to your house, right? Or while they're at your house. This is the last thing I want to talk about. It's preparing the meal, right? Sometimes you ask to go out to eat, but then there's always that one day where you're like, I want to cook them a special meal, like a home-cooked meal. I want them to have a meal at my house. And what's that meal look like? Well, for me, my meal at home with Christ is this, that every single day I make sure that I have lunch or dinner or breakfast with him. And how do you cook it up? Open up the word. Put on your favorite song to worship him. Prepare the best meal that you can. And have that time where you just sit and have a meal with the person that's living in your life. I promise you, if you do that last part every day, and it's not hard because here's the thing, you eat breakfast, lunch, or dinner, and make that time, just you and God. Even if it's with the family and even if it's with the kids. And we teach, we teach our, our nephews at home, and we will teach our nieces at home. We always make this joke with like either Austin or Christian or whoever, we just say, who do y'all want to pray today? Who's going to pray for the meal today? And we allow them to just pick who's going to pray. And the thing is, it's teaching them that before we eat, we pray. And they know before we eat, we ask God to be a part of our meal, and we thank God for what's here. And we pray. And as adults, sometimes, I'm not saying that we forget to pray for our meals, but sometimes we forget to just give thanks to what he has given us. Or just giving thanks to, hey, Lord, thank you for providing that for me. It's like, it's like the guest that comes over to your house that you're hosting, and they bring gifts. It's like, whoa, I did not expect that, but thank you. And that's how the Holy Spirit's like, hey, just want to let you know, check your closet, got something in there for you. I just want to let you know, there's a blessing coming. And that's the kind of relationship that you can have with him. And that's the kind of relationship that he wants to give to you. He's a loving father. He is a loving, a loving God. And just because you saw him heal people here doesn't mean he can't bring healing to you. And I want us to get, I want us to get to the place where we can understand that. And I want to close talking about my experience at conference. Before conference, I, uh, I got my office ready. And I changed it around a little bit. And, I, and, and before I changed anything around, and I was talking to Lynn and Edison, I said, I want to make this room a place where when people come in and they sit down, like, they can also receive too. Pastors, whoever needs to sit in this room, they can receive too. I just want to make this place like where God can just speak. And automatically, before I started like doing anything in my office, I turned on worship music. We started shifting furniture around. Like we started changing up the chairs and things like that. And I was like almost preparing the way. I was preparing my office to allow the Holy Spirit to move however he wanted to. I didn't think that in the very beginning that anything really was going to be, be of it. I was just, you know, just shifting furniture, just making sure there was enough space for people to come in here, and if they needed to take a rest, they could rest. If they needed to pray in here, they could pray. But God had such a bigger plan. You know, there was an altar here, and there, of course, the Holy Spirit's presence was in this room so strong. But I don't know what it was. And I think it's because, honestly, during conference, I had worship going in my office. That the moment that somebody stepped into my office, they just bawled their eyes out. And it's like, most of them happened to be my siblings, but they went in there and they're like, whoa, I just received whatever they received here from God, and it just like downloaded into their heart whenever they got into the office. I have so many photos of everything that happened in my office, like the prayer and all these kind of things. It was like, it was... <laughs> It was the best experience that I had at conference because I truly felt like I was experiencing God outside of the sanctuary. I was experiencing God outside of what I felt was like church, my, just my office. And I want that at home. I want that every day for every single one of you guys to be able to go to your workplace and say, I'm bringing God with me. Or you meet a friend that needs prayer, I'm bringing God with me. And you can experience him every day. I promise you, you can. I promise you, you can. 
This is the moment that I want to share, though. I sat in my office right after, it was right after the first day. Um, actually, I'm sorry. It was after the second day. And I sat in my office, sat at my desk, and I turned on the blessing. And, you know, the part where it, it talks about blessing your children and their children. And I sat, I sat in my office and I literally just turned on worship music. And at the moment I hit play, and it was just the first few notes of the song, I just started having tears running down my face. And I just had just an overwhelming sensation of God's love and peace over my life because I, I said, Lord, just at that moment, I, it wasn't that I was tired from conference. It was like, Lord, I need to receive what I need to receive. Just do it right now. Just let me receive whatever it is at my office. Everybody was talking in my office. And it was just me and him time. And I just, boom, it hit me. I just started bawling. Kim was sitting in my office. She started bawling. Julianne was in my office. She started crying. Because I allowed the Holy Spirit to live in my life. And I was bringing my house to my office. And the God I was experiencing, so did Kim and so did Julianne. And every single day after that, we just started experiencing God in the office. You can do that at home too. I feel like this is for somebody that's in this room that needs to hear this. At home, you're going through a situation that you may feel like, where is God? Or even in your marriage, you may feel like, where is God? And in your family, you may feel like, where is God? And our home is where, home is where our heart is, right? That's the famous line that we always hear. If your heart is in God and you allow God to be a part of your family and part of your life, I promise you the situation will change. And I know that there's a lot of people that need to hear that word, that at home I need something to change. I got the change for you. Get your house ready, get your heart ready, and allow the Holy Spirit to live there. Not visit, but live there. See, a lot of you guys have been praying, praying your heart out, Lord, change this, Lord, change, change that, help this, help that. How about, Lord, I just need you to live here. And I know that being in your presence is gonna change everything. Because that's what we were like at conference. I just wanna be in your presence, Lord. I just wanna be in your presence. Well, if you allow him to be in your heart and be in your life, you're already in his presence every day. Every day. So let's pray. Let's get to the place where we take out the trash. We prepare the way. And we ask the Holy Spirit, from today, from now on, you're no longer a guest in my house, but you have permanent residence in my house. And I'm making a room for you right now. I'm making room for you right now. Holy Spirit, right now we ask that you help us take out our trash. Forgive us of all the things that are toxic in our life and help us to get rid of those things. Take it to the curb is what I feel God's saying right now. The thoughts that you have of yourself, the negative thoughts that you are not capable of being used, the ideas that God doesn't love you or the ideas that God can't heal you or that your miracle or your blessing is not here, take that to the curb. That's just trash. Don't let the Holy, don't, don't, don't let the Holy Spirit not have freedom in your life. Take that stuff out and allow the Holy Spirit to move and continue to minister to your life right now. You are forgiven. You are loved. <laughs> May his presence go before you right now that not only you will be blessed, but your children and their children, a thousand generations. And Holy Spirit, we invite you. And this is us preparing our hearts. Prepare your hearts right here. Holy Spirit, my house is ready for you. My house is ready for you. What is it that you want? What is it that you need? I'm here for you, and I want you to live here. How can I make your stay comfortable? What can I do? Who is it that needs to be invited to the house to pray with us? Who is it that I need to pray for? What song do you want me to sing? What meal would you like me to prepare? Because Holy Spirit, we can't live this life without you. My home is not complete without you. My life is not complete without you. So God, we ask right now, Holy Spirit, come into the room. 
come into my house and live here forever. I want to experience you every day. The move of your power and your authority in my life every day. The trust that I've learned to have with you every day. And I thank you so much, Lord. And God, we ask right now that you come into our hearts. Church, can we stand? And let's pray. Holy Spirit, we thank you so much for this message today. And God, we have all taken out the trash and we have all prepared our life for you. <laughs> Make yourself comfortable, Lord. And help us, Lord, to experience you every day. To be able to maintain the fire and the authority that you have given us. To be able to maintain the, <laughs> the journey that we have with you every day. And God, we love you and we thank you for your love. We love you so much, Lord. And we ask that you continue to be in our lives forever. We thank you so much, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Church, I hope that you were blessed by this message. Go and make the way for him. Help him to be comfortable in your life. And I can't wait to hear the testimonies that you're going to have now that you're going to experience God every day. We'll see you next week.